Recently, an MP from Wayanad, who doesn't even speak his constituency's language, blurted out, India is not described as a nation. In our constitution, the line is, India that is Bharat is a union of states. For this Sahabzada, since various provinces came together to form the Indian state in 1947, there was no India before that. And he's not alone. I don't think there was a concept of India till perhaps the British gave it one. While the country is celebrating Azadi Ka Amrit Mahutsav, the slaves continue to whip themselves long after the masters are gone. When they say India as we know it, that's exactly what they mean. India as they know it, but not us. We got independence in 1947. How could something not exist and yet get independent? The Indian state was formed in 1947, but our civilization, Bharat, has existed for millennia. We need to realize the difference between a state, nation and civilization. Body, mind and Atma. The body may undergo changes, but the mind is unaffected and its Atma, eternal. But this is too much to digest for spoiled breads. Jambu Dweep was used in ancient scriptures for the name of India before Bharat became the official name. It is also the historical term for India in many Indian subcontinent countries before the colonial introduction of the Greek word India. Bharat Varsh is a term used in Ved, Mahabharat, Ramayana to describe the geographic region that encompassed the modern Indian subcontinent. Countries of Afghanistan, Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, Nepal, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, and Myanmar. Uttaram yat samudrasya himadresh chayva dakshinam varsham tad bharatam nama bharati yatra santati. Vishnu Puran says the country to the north of ocean and south of Himalay is Bharat. Vayu, Brahmand, Agni, Skand, and Markandi Puran all use the same word to describe the land. We use the same word Jambudweep in Puja Sankal. But you need to have done at least one Puja to know that. Back in the 15th century, Vasco da Gama sailed for India, not for Fiji. The East India Company was incorporated 107 years before United Kingdom was even formed and 261 years before Rahul's Nanihal came into existence. For thousands of years, Hindus from all corners of Bharat have been doing Tirth Yatras, fluidly moving between provinces and kingdoms like it's all one, and it is, always has been. Why did the Marathas go to fight in Panipat and defend a mere union from an Afghan invader? They were fighting for the civilizational state that is Bharat. Even the invaders were clearer about the idea of India than Rahul Gandhi. Over the course of history, the boundaries of our kingdom kept on changing, breaking, merging. But what remained unchanged was the civilizational continuity. People of different kingdoms united through dharm. The Persian called the entire continent Hindu. The Arabs called it Al-Hind. The Chinese called Hindu and the Greeks called India. Wave after wave, invaders sucked our resources dry. Looters who couldn't unite three tiny kingdoms of Ireland, England and Scotland airdropped in and suddenly united India. And in the final act of unity, they partitioned our land. Who helped them? The great grandfathers of these Nawabzadas. But as much as our Shahzada pretends his views are his, they are just implants of foreign subversion. It is critical for us to understand the global games of power. When some book celeb says India is just a union, it's a dog whistle for another partition. India is too big a piece to digest for the global military industrial complex. Breaking it is their strategy. They may sugarcoat it as sub-national diplomacy. It's high time that we outrightly call out the traitors. Before the borders get broken, the mines are invaded. Should California break away from USA? 
or Sicily from Italy or Scotland from UK? If not, then why should Kashmir, Tamil Nadu or Punjab? Unless the orders are coming from above and the pets are just wagging the tails. <laughs>